SFJ 4x4 Studios presents in my in my oversized four wheel drive Jeep, a Jeep podcast starring industry experts. Pure monosity. <laughs> what? What? Say that again. With mad scientist Scott Brown. Use my drill press as a sort of lathe. Our host Neil Simpson. If one light goes out, they all go out. Filled with shenanigans. We, we are really professional with Jeeps. This is I Speak Jeep. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever, however you are joining us. This is the I Speak Jeep podcast presented by SFJ4x4.com. And my name is Neil with Simpson Family Jeeps, joined per the use with our esteemed producer... And vintage experts. Hi, I'm Jeff. Expert. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> who, who are you, Jeff? Uh, the producer, the Italian stallion, sure? Jeff Shermani. Are you positive? No. Okay, that's fine. I haven't had enough coffee to be positive yet. No. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> yeah. And oh. I am Scott, the uh, mad scientist and uh, vintage expert, I guess. I, I guess. <laughs> we're very yeah. humble. Who's, who's we're, not sure of themselves? Right, right. Yeah. we're very humble. That's That's what it comes down to. That's all it is. Folks, we have got a great program for you, poor, 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 per the huge. We will be talking about budget dreams. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We all love budgets, yeah, how's, right? Yeah. 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 Well, Jeff knows about budgets. We, wow. We all know about budgets. Yeah, I what I, what I know budget. is that you can always go above budget, but you don't like it. No, no. <laughs> I it's... remember when I had a budget. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> man, and... and Without revealing entirely too much about myself uh, personally and the American hustle and all that kind of jazz, you know, the idea that budgeting is so, so, so valuable. And yet, as uh, American households, we <laughs> we struggle to prioritize it. It's, yep. it's so fascinating. But we will talk about the value of building on a budget in that regard. Also, Jeffrey and or his wife, I'm not sure. Have been playing with a laser, and we have a board game. A board game yes. in front of with us our, with our logo on it. Yeah, so that is super cool. We didn't need him to have like a blower hat or something on it, though. Well, we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna real quick. I'm gonna catch up on comments here. So Darla's saying good morning. Morning, Darla. Morning, Darla. Daddy Jeep. Morning, guys. It's Bantam Week. That's it right. Is. Uh, Patricia Fry. I'm watching too. Hey, Patricia. Dale, good morning. Good morning, Dale. And Joe, I'm not here. I'm merely a figment of your imagination. That's, that's normal. Uh, it is Bantam Week, and it is you know so so valuable to address the fact that uh, kind of in the New England state area to Midwest, this is arguably the largest show that uh, you can go to um, up until greater. Uh, the Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion, which, you know, is later in the year. And that one is growing in immense popularity. But certainly, you know, kind of north of the Mason-Dixon is Greater Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. North of the, I don't even know where the Mason-Dixon yeah, is. Yeah, it's north. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of where it's at as far as uh, our geography over there. Neil struggles with uh, spatial awareness on the map. <sighs> <laughs> I can, I'm really good with directions, but and man. Conrad. Man, outside of that, <laughs> outside of that, I, uh, you know, there's certain you get towns him in the that Geneva be, and he's lost. Right? I'm, I'm terrible with geography, but put me on the road, I can get you across the country. That's right. Uh-huh. So, Bantam Jeep Heritage Festival. If you are one of our national or international listeners, a thank you so much for you know being part of I Speak Jeep. But B, it is this phenomenal kind of rooted in heritage based festival yep and it was at one time one of the largest shows in the country yep and it's fascinating to see how the show circuit has ebbed and flowed and changed it once held or maybe still does hold the record for the longest jeep parade i believe it's gone back and forth so much time it's gone back and forth with jeep beach uh jeep beach obviously uh, down in Daytona, very, very, very popular, and Greater Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion has grown immensely over the years. Oh yeah. So kind of you know your your three biggest shows this side 
of the country uh, within arguably no particular order there, as I was sharing. Super, super cool stuff. Uh, Bantam takes place just north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, yep. uh, and it pays homage to the Bantam Car Company. Yep, which if you don't know, that was a tiny little car they made in the 30s and uh they also were one of the ones that threw their hat in the ring when the government said, hey, we need a four-wheel drive vehicle for reconnaissance." sense. Yes. I yes. tried hard on that word. People. You did. You did good on that <laughs> word. Wow, that was impressive, honestly. And, and we also got to do a little shout out. We do have a, a, you know, a good show uh, in Toledo as well later in the year. And absolutely. So uh, big shout out to Jerry. And I was actually going to ish talk about that uh, yep. with – the fact that I like to share with people, despite the fact that, you know, the West Coast and the East Coast have, you know, I think as a, as a country, we can admit they have a pretty good, uh, healthy dose of money, coast, yeah. you know, coastal. coastal. Uh, the fact that we actually are positioned in what I like to call the heartland of the Jeep and off-road industry mm -hmm. because we have the actual uh, conceptualization. The OEs are, are in our backyard. The OEs are in our backyard. And yep. so if you were to look at uh, our signature American legend uh, shirts on the back of them or the map that hangs in the, the background of the set here, uh, we actually, you know, we, we actually put uh, Butler, Pennsylvania and Toledo, Ohio yep. Yep. on our map to help contextualize where we're located because the absolute core foundation of this Jeep industry yep. was created right here. And the steel and all that went right through here yes. on its way to those various manufacturers. Yes. Now, additionally, uh, Chuck is saying everyone's meeting at the SFJ booth for coffee. So, uh oh, one, <laughs> you better have the coffee maker. Possibly right. two. <laughs> if not, we will be making a Walmart trip. Right. <laughs> right. We always have to buy an appliance. We at, have a at, traditional uh, Walmart trip at, at traditional Bantam. Walmart trip at Bantam. Yeah, I mean, the challenge is figuring out where Bantam fits into our approach these days uh, tr tremendously appreciate the show uh we are 10 year sponsors i believe of the show which is a pretty big deal it's been yeah. going on 11 uh, between the two of us I, we have not hardly missed one yeah uh, i don't think what, we've missed one um, when, wasn't last year the 10 year so wouldn't this be the 11 so that's participation right so yeah. i think that was bantam 10 uh, we're gonna have Bantam's, to i think 12 years now so the thing is, so Bantam... Don't, uh, make, don't make me feel old, Jeff. It's, so the me. actual sponsorship will be less. Participation, we've been doing 10 or 11 years. Sponsoring, we've been like eight or nine year sponsors. We yeah. are one of the longest running sponsors of the event itself. Um, and ultimately, I only personally missed vending at the event one year the very first year that's the one me and amy went to our, on our own and i did go to it yep. um but because i don't think we i think we must have gone on I opposite think, days or i thought you went the next year and didn't go to the first one but it doesn't matter that no, was that was a long time i ago. went to it just as a participant yeah same um, as me yeah but i vended at the next year when it was still at the uh, big Butler Fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people don't even remember. A lot of people involved weren't even aware or arguably there. Yes. A hand, you know, there's a handful of holdovers. Yep. So, so Daddy Jeep is saying this will be the 12th year. Yes. And then Steve Peck is saying Alice and I are hoping to see you there. Awesome. We hope to see you as well. So then I'm going to go back to it. We are 11 year participants. Mm hmm. And we are nine or 10 year sponsors yep. of it because we have been sponsoring from such an early uh, time on. So what I was the whole, start of the whole conversation was we used to invest uh, immensely in being at the event. Right. Yep. We would basically spend this whole week transitioning our physical space into an enclosed trailer, yep. then creating a display. Uh, which is a, just a we shut a, down this whole shop. We shut down the whole shop. All of our employees, you know, which well, obviously not tons and tons, but yeah. employees and family members and, and volunteers, volunteers, <laughs> and you know, we would basically Campers. have a week out to get ready for it, and then a week or two yeah. trying to unpack and figure out six, where everything's at. Oh, yeah. 
and <laughs> found a lot of parts later. Found a lot of parts later, or, or when we used to have the enclosed trailer, be like, "Man, is that tool out on the yeah. trailer still?" Yeah, and and I do. I appreciate those days and the sacrifice that we made. It helped, yeah. you know, kind of forged in fire uh, as far as our participation there. But the challenge that Glad I had, we were young when we did that. Uh, <laughs> still are young by comparison. Gracious Less old eggs man. And pains. Okay. Old man. Slept on trailers yes. in the ground. Yes. Uh, I, you know, out under vehicles, intense. I'd be paralyzed the, now if I did that. Listen to you. <laughs> listen to you. We have some good memories. We should actually just do like memory lane of Bantam at we, some point. We could. Greg ruined his wife for camping ever again. Well, for, see, I think, I think next week, because we have a very special episode next week with Bantam. Yes. I think we talk about some of those stories next we week. We will. We will. And we'll the talk egg. about. The egg, yes, your egg <laughs> that you brought, or honestly, Davy's egg from last year. Oh which is man, a great video. that was that was a great um, one. Or it's not, actually not. Vi- I, did I get video? We'll have to. Did I? I thought you got video. I think I have video. I think I think you do. Anywho, maybe mm. that can go out on the Patreon page. Right. <laughs> we'll see if we can dig it up and throw it out on the Patreon. For uh, Davy's sake, we won't put it public. <laughs> but we have had a fantastic formative experience with Bantam over the years. It is happening this weekend. Our participation is obviously we will be present. Uh, we will have a booth. We'll have some Jeeps on display. We'll have some basic product uh, for sale on site. But realistically, uh, we have experienced such substantial growth here within our physical facility, uh, infrastructure improvements, Jeeps on site that are needing service that uh, realistically uh, very challenging for us to kind of set up the booth that we once did. Uh, hopefully, I have this in the back of my brain that we will have a dedicated show rig in the future, uh, which would help us reach our our, our, our customer base, our followers, our friends. But this is not the year for that either. So, no. anywho. Uh, Lee's saying he'll be there sleeping on a car trailer. Yep. And Ken is saying morning. Morning, morning. morning. So, lots of good stuff happening, folks. Uh, we are, as, a, as we mentioned, going to be talking about building on a budget. Speaking of budgets, how are we all doing on our personal projects, folks? Uh, um, I had to order more parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I, I, I used my uh frequent credit card miles and and got paid down on it though so excellent I, my uh six more exhaust hangers are only going to be three dollars out of my pocket so oh that's good that worked to your favor yeah because i realized last night as i was working through that, that i only had dose exhaust yeah. hangers. exhaust hangers at this point and uh in true scott fashion the ones that came with the exhaust kit are not appropriate for yes. what i want to do right so. you have to you have to I actually do scott things you have to do scott things over engineer it yes and yeah. i also uh, uh did surgery on a you know 1952 head to so i can have heat um so that was interesting obviously all my friends that are in the flathead world said uh why didn't you do that when the head was off the motor i would have made s- too much sense that made sense i didn't know i needed a heater then uh i'm not taking it back off so i did creative vacuuming Oh gosh! Oh gosh! When Drilling he... into the into the water ports <laughs> with metal shards. Off of the vehicle topic, I also know a budget story about his from this weekend as well. What's that? Your trip to Erie. Oh God! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I thought I would be. It would be nice on Friday. Uh, my kids. They only have a couple of days left of school, and uh, Amy's mom's been camping in our backyard off and on. So that was a camping night, and I said, you know, it would be nice. The kids are playing and and camping out. Let's go for a date. We haven't gone on an actual, honest-to-God date in a minute and a half. So let's do that. So uh, we'd like to take a fun vehicle when we do that and something that maybe the kids don't fit in. So we decided we'd take the C10. So Mm -hmm. uh, obviously 90 is a hot mess, if you don't know. Lots of construction. Lots of construction. So we said, let's take it's, route five. It's actually getting hard to get into Erie because they've closed so many roads, main and back at yes. this point. Yes. Yeah. So we took route five in and we took route 20 back. Good. I'm going to contextualize real quick and just say, I, we're dealing with this locally as well. Yes. And, and the thing is, I had to, to check my attitude the other day and say, thank goodness that these infrastructure programs are happening. I don't yes. know where all the money is coming from. Me neither. I, people are working. Trucks are moving. Spades are going Lots in the ground. Of <laughs> Lots of trucks. And and I'm saying Erie. I was in Erie myself uh, recently. There is infrastructure happening 
all around the Constant. country right now. So many bridges and, being replaced. And yeah. roads and, and facilities being built. And I'm thinking, I don't know you know what is happening but years ago we used to complain you know that oh there are people are out of work or there wasn't this happening or there wasn't yeah. that and you know roads are falling apart and i understand roads are always going to be falling apart this isn't rome it is what it is folks but the fact that there is so many people working and there's so many infrastructure projects happening they're yes. starting so early air quotes from yeah. the spring <laughs> That's amazing. I, I'm trying to like check my attitude when that truck and I have to wait for three trucks to go by. Yeah. And I go, okay. I'm going to need to embody that because pretty soon I'm going to be going right through a construction zone and take my kids to grandma's. Absolutely. And I, <laughs> I, 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 I recognize that. You know what I mean? Because the planned closures just seem to be getting more and more. Yes. And I'm going. And main thoroughfares. Main working. thoroughfares yes. are getting addressed right now. So I'm trying to find the silver lining. So, All right, go so ahead. So anyway, so my wife, she wanted to go to Dollar Tree, and I didn't realize that there was Dollar Trees in Erie, but we found one. Okay. Why uh, wouldn't there not be a Dollar I, Tree? I don't know. Oh, okay. It's just like there's certain gas stations only in Erie. I didn't know if they were regional. Dollar anyway. Trees are national. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Haven't fine. you ever seen the Dollar General memes? That's kind of the same it's thing. fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, she is very important. What like, specifically she goes to for a dollar store? To me, as long as it says dollar in the title, it, it's, it's the good. same. It's his budget. It fits his budget at that point. But uh, you know, she had to go to a specific one. So yes. we're wandering around, and I'm like, "Where am I going to take my wife out to dinner?" And After their date at the Dollar Tree. That's right. Like, right. Just, just tree. make sure we're you're all you're This is why the budget story is so good. you so got to hear the next you're, part. You're lucky we didn't go to Aldi or Walmart yet. Right. Yeah, right. I was later. Yes. <laughs> so anyway. so Hot I, night in the Brown household. So I'm scrolling through, and, I, and there's a couple places that are immediately on top of this Dollar Tree. And I'm like, oh, this, this one sounds interesting. And it's within three minutes of driving or eight minutes of walking. Uh -huh. And uh, has great reviews. It has really good reviews. It has great reviews. Okay. And I, I need to bring this back and, and contextualize. We're in a primered slash 1980 paint job 68 Chevy pickup truck. <laughs> yes. Yes. I am wearing a Rambler shirt. <laughs> He's dressed in street clothes. With this hat not, on. Barely not, rolled not out of the night. garage. Not barely rolled clothes. out of the garage. I, I, have, I, I didn't have jeans on, thank God. Okay. But I did have shorts on. And uh, my wife was very nicely. Were they dressed. khakis? Uh, At least, or they were. Car Tell me, they were like like camo print. The, no, they weren't the camo ones, but they did have cargo <laughs> pockets. They were cargo <laughs> pockets. So you're embodying your your perfect oh, dad I'm bod. In, I'm in my dad bod. Your dad, you're oh, in your dad no. bod. And I, I, I'm just not observant, I guess, because we walk in and I should have had a red flag immediately. And Jeff's like, "Why didn't you know <laughs> when you, you walk were in, in trouble? When you walk into a place and there is, a, it's supposed to be a bar and grill, and you have to walk through a foyer entrance with a piano and all <laughs> the the you know, fancy lights. I missed it all. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and they sat us right down. I'm like, wow, this is great. So we didn't have to wait in line. Yes. And then we saw the prices. Oh, God. At I'm, least they had prices on the menu. At least they had prices, because oh, yes. you, you didn't have to employ I, the, and, if and you now, have to ask, you can't now afford it. I'm going to show it. how redneck I am. Uh-huh. Because you had the, the, the food was a la carte, and I did not know that until I ordered my food. <laughs> I'd never done that in my life. Oh, A God. cheeseburger was $26. Oh. And they had some stuff on it, like, called jam and stuff, and I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not here for that. <laughs> So I was like, if I'm going to spend $26 on a cheeseburger, that's some mystery jam. I don't know what it is. Uh -huh. I'm getting steak and to hell with it. So that's what I did. So you ordered steak and, and, from the and, $26 and, cheeseburger joint. And and yeah, because that was a wise choice. Well, <laughs> I, I didn't have any mysterious ingredients. Uh -huh. And those that know Scott know mysterious ingredients in Scott are bad it, sometimes. It, mysterious ingredients are tomatoes yes, to you. Stop it. <laughs> so... And I'm like, I'm just going to get mashed potatoes. You can't screw up mashed potatoes. Oh. And maybe they'll be like grandma's. You know, uh -huh. maybe, it's just I got to pay for mashed potatoes. And then I was told the mashed potatoes was $8 more. This Eight dollars for, mashed for a side of potatoes for a side of mashed potatoes <laughs> and and god bless my wife she was ready to just bail maybe she, i should come she, cook for you guys i'll i'll come I'll, for those prices no, I'll i can't come afford you now right <laughs> so anyway she's like listen we don't have to, to eat, eat here and i chose to, to take the high road and be like honey you're worth it oh you know? nice. and she is she is nice. so worth it and we hadn't gone out to eat again on a date in a minute yes so, 
Yeah, you could put this notch I in just, your belt. Just uh, took the credit card out and set it on fire. And just and we Chuck, ate water. Chuck says, and, and no bread and no and no salad. You ate water. Uh, uh, Chuck water. says, best damn cheeseburger ever. Only thing better is the gold plated potatoes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Eight dollars for a side of mashed potatoes. So, so you had no appetizers. None. No side salads. Nope. Your drinks were water. You didn't even order any fancy drinks. Nope. What was the bill? Let's do it. We make we made fun of Jeffrey and his camper yep. bill. With with tip, hundred dollars. I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. We're two people. I mean, the, the thing two, is, those people, a hundred bucks on a on a on they a date a night chef. isn't that big of a deal if you had some drinks, if you had Scott. some appetizers, right. right? But I'm saying, like, if you had an experience, <laughs> but if you did the full experience, there was a, a guy, but just to get the meal, there was a guy. His full job was just to yell at the people making food. <laughs> I think his name might have been Gordon. His <laughs> name was Gordon. He was checking things as it came across. He put things back across the, the thing. It was like, this is not good enough for this place. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Good for them. There was people sampling wine. Nice. Did you sample any wine? I, negative. <laughs> he was afraid it would cost $20 for the taste right, test. Right. Right. For the taste <laughs> test. Uh, the I, little flight. I tried to not show my my uh, you know poorness, but I really wanted to save the paper towel from the bathroom. It was such a <laughs> the, high pie. The pores went out to eat. <laughs> The pores from Pontiac went out to eat. <laughs> now I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say the business name, and and I respect this business. It's called the Cork. Yeah. Uh, uh, and it is. It is a very nice. Uh, it's very nice. Very nice venue, would, and it is worth going there. When for I'm a more date prepared, night. it would be nice to if go back. If you're prepared for it, if, I was not prepared. Right. The Mercedes out front should have been the red flag for me being a car guy, but I was. Not, I didn't. They see so often have there... a live acoustic set there. Sure. So that's yeah. how sure, I'm sure, familiar sure. with it. Sure. Nice establishment. I did not great see reviews. them either until we were leaving. I apologize. Great reviews. <laughs> great. Great company. <laughs> the, I'm surprised you didn't have to valet the truck though. Uh, I think I might have parked in the improper parking lot. I don't know. We walked in. Well, they're I, just in a, a big God. plaza, yes. so it's fortunate yes. that there's yes. just. Yeah, I'm the just saying the, yeah, I was in the plaza. The times lot. when we've had to valet, that's when you really have to question uh, what is coming next in this yeah. experience. Oh, yeah. but see, that doesn't affect. We've we've valeted a Willys before. Uh, we and, have and, valeted and a 1948 a hundred dollars when yes. we did that. Yes, yes, uh, we did. I was uh, not was prepared. A great, great experience. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, we got to we got to keep moving. <laughs> here. Other th other things, real quick. Chuck did say that as far as budget type projects uh, that I should wrap SFJ around the land yacht. Around the land yacht. Oh. He's, he says, put an SFJ wrap on Jeff's land yacht. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, that's We'll jump right on that. Yeah. As far, right. yeah. Well, all of our wraps. I, I still haven't figured out how these other businesses wrap their vehicles. I have tried a couple different times uh, with cheap. local with local. And I understand wrapping a service van that, that goes on service calls every day, you know? Yeah. Um, but realistically... Uh, really, really have struggled with getting scheduled for graphic wraps other than, you know, color change wraps. Yeah. That seems to be really prevalent, but actual graphic wraps seem to be a, a little more challenging, uh, both to actually access somebody who does graphic wraps, scheduling, and then the financials of it. So when yeah. we do pin down one or two businesses, so we don't have a lot to choose from is my challenge. Yes. yes. Uh, on a budget, uh, in my own little brief update, I had a, a fun experience uh, with uh, our friend Jason. I didn't even see him this weekend. However, on an auction, he bought a tool uh -oh. that uh, would benefit the house build, right? Mm -hmm. As we're doing the uh, the PEX fitting crimping, uh, he actually bought a electric, it's not hydraulic at that point, it's an electric crimper mm -hmm. for the PEX wedding band. Okay? Oh, nice. Not, it's the pinch crimper clamp which is the more uh ideal uh pex tubing piece not the not the true wedding band where it needs to encapsulate it but just the pinch so he buys this tool on auction because you know the idea of having to do all of these pex fittings and he yes. has interest in doing his own house in yeah. the future he buys it as a bear tool it was really interesting now i will disclose the brand because then this impacts the budget conversation going forward it is a ryobi Oh no. oh, oh no. So, so I'm sorry, I want Jason. If, 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 <laughs> if you are home and you have Ryobi, my dad has a, a homeowner's Ryobi uh, toolkit. Mm -hmm. That is a perfect homeowner's product line, yeah. right? Uh, 
for <clears throat> for a very occasional homeowner, not Correct. not a yes. hobbyist, not a homeowner. hobbyist or a DIYer. Yeah, but somebody not, who not wants to build have, a house. So, right, not exactly going to build a house. Somebody needs a screwdriver to sit in the closet for two years before you go. Oh, I need to. Wow, put this one listen to in. Jeffrey feeling, yeah. you know, Mr. Friday. Big Man on the campus yeah. over here because he went from DeWalt to Milwaukee, <laughs> finally jumped on the Milwaukee game. Listen, I, DeWalt is still okay for a homeowner, DIYer even, but not Ryobi. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Ryobi has the uh, 18, uh, they call it the 18 plus or 18 one touch or, you know, yeah. something. Yeah. They have some line and they are really pushing after that. Uh, you know, this w- trending, hey, multi-tool battery. Yeah, they're, they're blah, trying blah, blah, blah. to come for them. They are, right? And, of course, Ryobi is, you know, has its specific agreement with Home Depot. So that's a pretty big flagship to be shoving product into the market. Yep. Um, and, and, and honestly, if you have Ryobi at home and it's working for you, I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you have something. Get tools, use tools, better yourself. Um, you know, explore your creativity. Cool, right? Now, let's do the tongue-in-cheek fun stuff. It's not Milwaukee, yes. right? <laughs> and, and in the cult of Milwaukee, uh, if you are not with us, you are against us. Yes. And, <laughs> and so, uh, so he brings this bear tool in, and he's like, oh, uh, how dare you be seen, you know, with Ryobi in your possession, you know? Um, but as a token of appreciation, I wanted to make sure that I got batteries because it was a bare tool. So I wanted to get batteries. Mm-hmm. Home Depot right now is doing dose batteries and charger, 99 bucks, mm-hmm. and then you get a free tool. Uh, and I got to be honest with you. It's because they can't give away Ryobis. <laughs> so they, I told my <laughs> wife in the store, I said, Did you buy her a drill? It's like, basically, you're you're getting, no, I'm not going to buy my wife. No, she has Milwaukee. Yeah, that, okay, that's that, right. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, 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 would, I would not lower myself to that. Thank uh-huh. you, Scott. No, um, but they do have a three eighths impact. They have drills. They have hedge clippers and leaf blowers. They have all yeah, these things. Um, you got our garden tools. No, I needed to buy the tool or, or the batteries for the the tool that Jason had purchased, and and then pick out a free tool. Uh, we did end up getting a jigsaw because it was something we didn't have. We have uh, covered via Makita and Milwaukee on our, our current little job site. We did not have a cordless jigsaw. I have a corded jigsaw, but not a cordless. So we said, Hey, we'll beat on this thing. And, and if it, if it, if it lasts, if it then, lives, if it lives, then it can go on and live elsewhere, you know, in the future. But I had to, I had, to, I had to, to be on the phone. And I was talking very loudly out into Home Depot. Never. About, yeah, this will be a great present for you, Jason. I'm so glad to buy you a present. Mm. <laughs> I Not that I'm going to mix it with my Milwaukee, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> my wife was not amused. Uh, I can't imagine why. <laughs> he but, was embarrassed to be in the Ryobi <laughs> aisle. <laughs> Needless to say, great budget items. Uh, they have a whole line of tools. There is this special going on right now. If you are just getting into the game and you need to build out your tool selection and you're not going to be doing regular heavy hard work with your electric tools, might be a good option for you. Uh, like I said, smoke and deal, 99 bucks, two batteries, charger, and a free tool. I don't think it's that bad, especially if you've already got some uh, some Ryobi in your closet. Yep. Which where, is where it should be. <laughs> yep. I was I was, I was waiting to see where that I was. Went. I was just gonna drop it. Building on a budget. We need to actually talk about Jeeps, folks. And uh, recently, we've been uh, requested for uh, more some budget lifts. Mm -hmm. When would budget lifts be appropriate versus full suspension systems? Uh, Additionally, what are some things that we should look to save some money on and doing with our Jeep versus where should we invest? I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into this. So I'm going to say doing it right the first time is a budget. Ah, look at you! Because I have pants. seen so many people that physically spend a, l- a small amount of money on a lift kit or something that makes their Jeep uh, not fun to drive. Yeah, and then they have to then rip off that five, six, maybe even eight hundred dollar system that they thought they were saving money on, and now spend fifteen. You know, that's or not or, or three. Yeah, that's right. Not or more. The, it's not helping the budget there. So in my situation, in my opinion. At that point, you just you just spend the three. 
and that's <laughs> that's where the emphasis is going to come on. How are you going to use your Jeep? 100%. Go use it first before you before you come yes. buy something because you don't know. Yes. You might be okay with that budget lift. Yes, you that, might. That you might may be okay, be okay with higher OB tools, you, or you might need the Makita. Oh, wow, he, he made that comparison. Wow, he's he's just gonna. He's I I've offended the we, table. We don't <laughs> use Ryobi quality budget lifts. No. Oh goodness, yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna get away from the tool because it's not a bad tool, and there are people out there. I'm sure you may have some in your garage right now. That's fine. Uh, with budget lifts, there is an idea of uh, spacer lifts mm -hmm. and puck lifts, or what we used to call them. Yep. Uh, and there are then brands, right? So oftentimes, I will present a customer with two different brands. One. And, and honestly, the components being similar or shared, mm -hmm. but ultimately the the biggest difference between the two is one is made overseas and one is made domestically, right? Yep. And ultimately, we can tell you with the domestic products, typically you get a thicker gauge of steel that mm -hmm. is that is making up the product, uh, slightly better quality hardware when it is provided, yep. and typically a more robust a coating on it that has a better lasting power in the salt and the brine and stuff right. that we use and it's regularly. A big difference in between something you're going to drive year round, every single day, just pile the miles on it, or if it's a summer toy. Yes, that, there's a big difference there. Yes, and I think that it's it's valuable to say that if you are a, an individual who is only ever going to go get ice cream in your Jeep, first of all, I support you in that process. Yep. That is perfectly okay. And so you may not need the full Iron Rock off-road long arm with, you know, Fox, you know, resi shocks and, you yeah. know, the upgraded flex joints and all that kind of stuff. It, that's okay. We don't need to sell you into that. Maybe yeah. a spacer uh, or, or puck lift is appropriate for you so long as it is installed uh, appropriately. With then you the will appropriate retain it pieces it with needs. the appropriate pieces it needs. Yep. But... I really struggle um, when people spend maybe all the money on a quality lift and then they go for budget tires. Yes. Right? 100%. And unless, I mean, we had a customer before who, uh, he was a super cool character and I believe he actually had a Tesla and he had very specific tires on his Tesla and yep. um, burnt them off very quickly. Yep. And then from there on, he just he put said, garbage tires, put everything. garbage tires on everything. Yes. And he, as Bur a consumer, he, as a consumer said, I understand what I'm getting for my money. Right. Yeah. He was not naive to the fact that he was putting garbage tires on his vehicle. Yes. But I like to think that if you are building on a budget, the idea that you should things that connect you to the road should should invest in you should invest in yes, yes. Uh, and and again also depending on how you're using your vehicle if you're driving on the highway you're going to want a better constructed tire that's going to balance better yes whereas if your jeep is just a buggy and it just rolls onto the trailer and then off the trailer you're going to want to invest in a different construction of tire yes uh, it could be budget related but there is a particular level where you actually might invest in a very expensive off-road tire yes. uh, for its off-road uh, capabilities. Yep. And so kind of prioritizing your investments is part of the budgeting process. Well, and if you have to do it in stages, you have to do it in stages, but we can help you with that process and help you understand where should you start with in that budget. Yeah, yeah. and it depends on the who the entire uh, intended use of that Jeep is where you start too. Well, because I think one of the biggest challenges is uh, constantly uh, we are, we are <laughs> as humans, we are constantly creating our own problems. One mm -hmm. is the desire to meet immediate gratification, to satiate immediate gratification. Yep. Tires and wheels make us happy folks. That's they just do. the reality of the situation. You want to change a vehicle. <clears throat> instant. Tires, instant gratification is tires and wheels. Yep. Yep. It just visually looks different immediately. Um, and the other thing is, uh, with that, is this idea, a little bit of the consumer conscience to say, um, I, I don't want to be taken advantage of. I'm a little overwhelmed in the process, so I'm just going to thumb through the internet and through this kind of faceless box store e-com retailer yep. uh, because there's so many choices. Uh, I really kind of can't go wrong by picking 
blah from Amazon, right? Yeah. And and this is where you're saying, you know, they put that that bumper on yep. for $150, $300, yep. and it doesn't last six months. Yes. You know? 100%. Um, yep. <clears throat> and, and those are the challenges because now you've, you've spent that money, but it was because you were able to sit in your underwear and order it off of Amazon at or, your convenience. Or the worst part, and I've seen it a couple of times, where their perception of what they then can do with their vehicle versus what that part was actually produced to do. Sure. And that thing sucks more than to think, well, well, now I can put a winch on that. Well, kind of. Yes. Uh, now I can get yanked out of a mud hole buried to my rockers. Sort Once. You can get pulled out once. <laughs> Potentially, if the yeah. bumper stays intact, that one big pole. Yeah, right. You know? and, and they they weren't. They were trying to make an educated decision. They were trying to make a good choice. They just didn't have the right tools uh, in that moment. So. Sure. So the budget process is not just the financial budget process, but yes. the prioritization of investment. The plan. Right? The plan. Yep. And and so And sometimes I mean the biggest challenge with vehicles is you can try to have a plan and then the vehicle smacks you and tells you otherwise. Uh without question. The but Jeep you, will tell us what it needs. But right? you still gotta have a good starting focus plan. That uh, does help. That does help. Jeffrey? So we got comments here. Chuck's saying, so stickies for my daily are a no-go? <laughs> uh, Linquist said, morning, guys. Good morning, morning Scott. Uh, Ken said, Neil, you wear underwear when ordering? <laughs> um, and then Jerry Huber is, plan build with both budget and functional considerations will always beat the impulse boy buys. Uh, and that is that's such, that's wisdom, <laughs> yes. right? And that's a thing from, from, from Jerry, whose uh, birthday just passed. So happy birthday to Jerry. Um, and, uh, one of the organizers of, of Toledo Jeep festival and, uh, a great, uh, advocate for the Jeep community as a whole. Mm -hmm. And what he is speaking from folks is wisdom. That's, that's ultimately what that is. Yep. And he's speaking from a, he has a fleet of very cool vehicles. And so the idea of expectation and budget, uh, flagshipping mm -hmm. your approach is going to return tenfold to the fact that I see it. I want it. I got it. Yep. Um, so there is a time and a place for budget lifts. I yep. do genuinely believe that we have, uh, recently had a couple customers who swear upon the fact that they are not going to, uh, do off-roading and off-roading is it's, it's kind of, it varies person to person, right? Oh, yeah. Because I'm amazed at, um, when you get so far removed, uh, to some individuals who, you know, maybe live more in urban environments, right. going down uh, a logging access trail through, say, the Allegheny National Forest or right. through one of our national forest roads, it's which hardcore is hardcore trail for them, which is a trail. Yeah. Right. Uh, the and fact, that's fine. The fact that you, you should not take uh, your Chevy Impala down this trail. That's not what its intended purpose was. Yes. It well, becomes then off-roading. Me and Neil will do that for We you. would totally do that for <laughs> you. Without, without a doubt. <laughs> but because that, right, then hardcore off-roading, and, and it's always valuable to say we're talking from a perspective of people who have off-roaded a lot. As I look yes. at the environment and I see people out there actively off-roading and kind of building their, their online personas as an off-roader or a recovery person or whatever, and I'm thinking, yeah, I did that 20 years ago. You know, I'm like, there's other pursuits that I'm equally interested in. I still love that aspect of it. Yep. But but for us, it's like oh, banging around at this X, Y, and Z facility is, uh, you know, I don't want to say it's lost its luster, but it's just part of the portfolio. Yes. Right. And so, you know, granted, have I done any rock bouncing? No. And so, you know, I'm not going to push to that, though, either. And I'm certainly not going to take a budget boost equipped vehicle right. and try to rock bounce. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's Darla saying uh, off-roading sounds fun, but not rock climbing. And, yes. and that is one that we oftentimes get uh, people saying, well, you know, this can or can't rock climb. I, I loved. Uh, and everything by when I said rock I, climb once, anything can <laughs> rock climb once. <laughs> the other thing I just. Well, rock, or they could get hung up on the rocks. We wouldn't know anything about um, that. <laughs> the, rock climbing is such a funny word uh, or phrase in our industry because, again, it means something different to each person. Yep. Uh, there are rock gardens. There's the mammoth trail. We've talked about some of these things. Those are gnarly, low and slow and go type trail riding. Yep. Um, or. What was it about five, ten years ago? Grand Cherokee had on their selectable air ride suspension rock, 
rock. Yes. Yep. And I just, I mean, I remember being privy to a group of, of men on a, like a, a retreat. And this guy was so proud. He wanted to relate to me, right? Because yep. my Jeep and off-road nature, he wanted to relate and share that his Jeep had rock climbing mode. And I just had to swallow my tongue. Yes. You know? that, that means driving across gravel beach. <laughs> and and then that's, that's what it means to me. But to yeah. him... Uh, he, you know, as a person who lived more in an urban environment, that to him was adventuring. That was something that gave him a hope for the yeah. weekend, for, oh, yeah. for that summer break, that he was going to be able to go up to the mountains and, and again, switch it to rock. And that's okay. And that, and that's okay. Yeah. Right. And so having that, that perception of meeting an individual, uh, an owner where they're at and what each person's build is going to be composed of and that's the challenge is that one size does not fit most no in our industry building on a budget is not one size fits most each person has their own budget and what their what their you know intended utilization of the vehicle is going to determine budget and and having realistic expectations ah there you go that is exactly what i was going to share next because you could come in Going, well, I want to build this whole Jeep with a lift kit, wheels, and tires, and I want to be $800. Let's be realistic. That's not going to happen. Right. Right. It just isn't. And ultimately, what you're going to get for $800 is not going to be quality. Right. It's going to be a bunch of used parts. Somebody will have beat on it once already, and you're going to have a lot of headache. Now, if you are a... Uh, you know, a, a personally equipped individual to make the best of that situation, then good for you. Yep. You know what I mean? That you can take a derelict beaten control arm and press in new bushings and lubricate and set up the suspension all uh, all from, you know, that use takeoff, hand-me-down, or a piece of scrap steel you found in the, the corner of the garage. That's awesome, yep. you know? That's awesome. But again, that experience does not fit the needs of the school teacher who just wants to get ice cream in their their cool looking Jeep. Yep. And both of you are equally valuable to the Jeep community, yep. right? So for me, that investment is in things that keep you connected to the road, good brakes, yep. Yep. and good tires. Those yep. are things because again, I typically want to get in my Jeep and drive it without worrying about is the sidewall of my tire gonna blow out because it's uh, used or or, or also, dry rotted or you know also something people don't think about you buy a cheaper tire and maybe you only get half the life that you normally get out of a higher absolutely. quality tire absolutely well and you know Dale just said it best the budget was adjusted to meet the updated scope yes yes and and that is the and, and that will also and continue to evolve as you do Jeep things with your Jeep because yes. I have seen many times where somebody comes in and says I'm going to do blah and then they go out and they either really like it or they really don't and uh most parts the ones that do really like it want to invest differently in their jeep afterwards yep. mm-hmm. absolutely now when it comes to lighting because of course we are a very functionally minded business we attract very functionally minded customers um, but it is valuable to say that we are not wholly unaware of some of these aesthetic pieces that we really like. Yeah. And so I want to talk about funsy things a little bit when it comes to building on a budget. Yep. And I do want to talk about uh, as far as lights and vinyl, mm-hmm. right? Because stickers. Oh, and yeah. Stickers matter. And I'm going to start with stickers, right? Because that is something that just seems kind of uh, so trivial that it would not be worthwhile of addressing. But when we set out to offer our our vinyl uh, stickers and, and Jeep tattoos. The idea is that, first of all, not all vinyl is created equal. Yep. And so buying an, a, a, an appropriate exterior automotive grade vinyl starting there is valuable. Somebody who's just kind of getting into it or buying a random sticker on the internet, you don't exactly know what you are getting for right. that. Yep. And then based on our experience of trying to install the stickers, it was really valuable uh, for me, for us, that should we sell a consumer a sticker, a trail graphic, that they knew how to install it because they've just exchanged funds to us for said graphic. We want for you to be able to install it yourself, right? We don't need to put that sticker on necessarily. Right. Though people have asked us to put graphics on and, and obviously we've done our own. Uh, this idea that we created a how-to video 
and a little QR code and, and, you know, piece that accompanies. So the idea that, yes, this we're just talking about stickers, but we're yeah. putting this much forethought into the fact that a sticker that is competitively sold at a rate that the Internet sells them for, that you still have a value added experience that yep. your budget goes further because Correct. now you didn't just spend ten dollars on this and it's ruined the first time you try to put it on. Yep. You know? Or it only lasted a summer. Or it only lasted a summer, right? right. Now, our objective is to try to create more lasting power out of whatever you're spending your money on. Yep. Years ago, uh, we found out that we had non exterior grade stickers you remember those little sfj four by fours they'd go on the outside people would put them on the outside of their jeeps and then just like going through the car wash would wipe the color off of them and everything you know um and so uh, obviously we learned our lesson there hey this is for sticking on your laptop on your fridge on your toolbox that's what this is for and then actual outdoor vinyl now we have the outdoor ones i got it on the computer so yeah viewers can see it Nice, nice. And yep. that's that's something that seems so trivial, but that's about budget, right? Yes. Well, and honestly, for us to provide those stickers or provide that process, it really doesn't cost anything different. Um, it's just being aware of what it goes into for both the business and the consumer. Yep, yep. That's part of the budget. When it comes to budget lighting, right, just because a, a light bar of 50 inches looks the same as a light bar over here 50 inches – does not make them the same. No. It's just like the vinyl. Just because the stickers look the same does not mean that they are the same. Yep. So how do lights, how would a person who's listening to us right now choose an LED or, or well, you know, series of LEDs for their Jeep? The same as uh, the previous. Well, what are you going to use it as? Uh, is Toast. this your daily that you're going to be in a snowstorm in, uh, you know, beginning of January and trying to get across to uh, grandma's house to the holiday festivities. Right. Well, then you need to invest appropriately in your headlights. Um, If you're just going to put on a light that you're only going to turn on at a Jeep show five times a summer, um, and that's literally what it is, and it's not life or death if it doesn't work, Yep. then you can invest differently. Yep. Um, And that's literally just a party piece. Yeah, you know, your Jeep... You might be sad because your underglows don't appropriately work, <laughs> um, but no one is on any of the wiser there. Yes. That if you purchase uh, cheaply into your headlights, and then you get into an accident or someone can't see you, that is a is a misuse. Yes. So, and as it comes to say the the rock lights that you know people yes. love to to turn on at the meet and greets, I I, I gotta say. <laughs> installation of those rock lights is everything is everything oh right? yeah you can bring a cheap rock light uh to the dance and if it's installed well yep then you'll actually you, your people will be none the wiser yep but all too often we don't uh we don't do a lot of rock light installs s- typically but we have done some reinstalls we've done a bunch of reinstalls yeah and i was gonna say typically it's because our initial uh, installation cost is too high for yeah. that consumer. They'll look at it and be like, well, why is it so expensive? My buddy says I could throw these on. Yeah. Or they've done it for me. And the issue is the reinstalls. Yep. The fact that um, you have now invested $200 in rock lights. Yep. And, you know, after one or two times of use, they're f- wrapped around the drive shaft. They've melted on the exhaust. Yep. They've fallen off while you were off roading, or yep. they s- straight up corroded and now are no longer functioning up in your wheel wells. Yep. Those are things where your investment, your budget is out the window. Yes. Because uh, of the, the product and installation. Oh, and even worse, let's say uh, improperly hooked to the battery or not fused or something like that. Oh, yeah, you could end up with a fire. a fire. And I've seen plenty of Jeep fires, and I've always, uh, just for my own curiosity, said, okay, where did the fire start? Yes. And it's almost always, of the, time always it's the battery. battery. Always. Uh, and now you've lost your full investment. Yes. And, and I know some insurances, if they find faulty installation, they're not ready to pay out either. No. So they'll drag that process out. So now you're really in, in the trouble. And, and at that point, the money you saved is is, is null and void. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so, like, I, you know, I think the best thing to say, folks, there is a time and a place for being budget minded. And a budget is going to fit, uh, is going to be unique to you or, yep. you know, to, to fit your needs. I think the last piece of building on a budget 
is maintenance. And we would be doing a disservice to the process if we didn't talk even just briefly about the fact that maintaining your Jeep, yep. and that's not saying we have to maintain your Jeep, that, that you are maintaining your Jeep, um, is so critical to maintaining a, a budget or having a budgeted approach 100%. to your vehicle. Because if you go out and you play at any of our local, geographically, we are near the Great Lakes. And so our mud and, and water crossings are sandy and silty and fine particulate, which love to get into bearing surfaces, permeate seals, and depreciate um, you know, everything. any bearings and everything <laughs> in the process. And so the idea is that if you are doing that, and then you're not coming home and immediately hosing down your vehicle, greasing anything that's greasable and serviceable, purging that, changing your differential fluids um, with appropriate frequency. And I'll add, remove the tires and wheels, wash the brakes out, that kind of stuff. You are depreciating your investment. You are yes. depreciating it every single day that you use it post uh, post that, that wheeling experience that you had. Yep. So the idea is that if you're going to get ice cream with it, cool. There's a budget and a budgeted process for you. You don't need that monster long arm suspension, but also if you are going to go out and use the heck out of your Jeep and you've built it to the nines, there's a maintenance process that, that protects and insulates your budget. Yep. Because otherwise, if you just go into the whole process naively, then it's just going to cost you two, three, four, ten times more than it should. And we that's something else that we do uniquely, I feel, is we try to educate you, okay, you told me that you want to have a 37-plus tire and you're going to go out and beat on your Jeep. Okay, now you have what we'll call race car parts. Yes. And now you've increased your uh, maintenance. Yes, your uh, exposure to maintenance, exposure to risk. because It's higher. Now, because that Jeep is built for that off-road experience. And I always, yes. I like to think of, of how we approach things on a, on a balanced equilibrium, saying that um, arguably a Jeep comes in, it's it's kind of on, on the, the line graph, it's kind of dead center. And when a person says, well, I, I really, I'm building it to overland. Uh, okay, well now it moves a little further away from uh, you know, your commuting, your, your yeah. commuting build or your rock climbing build. If you truly are a person who loves rocks and you want a low and slow slinky through rocks, overlanding and putting a giant rooftop tent and onboard water and, yeah. you know, all of those accessories yeah. is not conducive with the fact that you need to maintain a low center of gravity with a big slinky soft suspension. Yep. Yep. These are, these are contradictory build processes. And, you know, then we get a lot of customers who want a Swiss Army knife. Well, that's cool, but we need to have a Swiss Army knife that doesn't get into super high maintenance parts, those race right. car parts. If you talk to any of your friends who race uh, dirt track or weekend or yes. drag race. Anything. They, get they to never go, have money. <laughs> they never have money, and they get to go around the track or down the track like one, one time, time. Yep. and then they spend the next week or two rebuilding. rebuilding. Yep. yep. You're, we're no different, folks, as far as our off-road vehicles are concerned. Yeah. We don't exactly get to have our cake and eat it, too, and go out and just beat on the vehicle relentlessly yeah. and then expect to drive it to work on Monday or Tuesday morning. That's just improbable in how the process works. That's all about being budget-minded. Yeah. And the last piece that I'll share, because it's it's super valuable, and I know Darla is, is watching, listening, and has recently shared with people, and it's part of what we talked about Um in the last episode, the idea that building up an appropriate older vehicle that fits your initial initial purchase uh, price fits your needs and its functionality fits your needs may be of more value to you than trying to go out buy fifty sixty thousand dollars and then put twenty thirty forty thousand dollars into it. Hundred percent. So there is value in the budgetary process of getting a vehicle that initially meets your needs and then approving upon it uh, kind of strategically. Yep. Yep. All about building on a budget, folks. If you have any specific questions, you can always reach out to us with our text-only number um, or emailing in uh, to Jeffrey. Jeff, you have prepared a board game for us. Will our listeners who are listening in their ear holes on their commute, on their airplane ride, are they going to get uh, yes, because the there's, same? Yes, there, because there's cards that you have to read off that, 
advance you through the game. Or, okay. Or so rim. those of you who are listening understand that there is, you know, your standard, what appears to be, you know, kind of a, you know, 24 inch by 24 inch or so game board in front of us. Yep. So the so the game board, I'll just start off by saying that I did all this on the laser without Kristen's help, and I should have just let her help. Um, <laughs> so I, I learned some things about it. Uh, I didn't have the focal length set properly, so it's a little fuzzier than I would have liked it to turn out. But um, I did have fun making game pieces, so I'm going to share those with you. Uh, and we'll put a picture up on social media of some of these later because they're fun. Uh-huh. But. You've got the willies. We've got the little willy silhouette on one of the game pieces. Game piece is about an inch by inch little piece of uh, uh, plastic. I, got, I love the the willies Easter egg that we use all the time. We got the OG the, SFJ logo. We got the OG SFJ logo, uh, the OG for the original. Uh, right? Again, learning the focal strength and photo editing is not my strong suit, so I did the photo edits myself. Wow, you were busy. And, and I understand that I should have just let Kristen handle that as well because the, the the these next two didn't turn out as clean oh, as okay. I would have liked. So the first two were, were outstanding. Oh my <laughs> god! So uh, what are you looking at there? Oh, uh, well, right now I'm looking at uh, the mad scientist uh, <laughs> face off this of is, off this of the sticker. It is scary. What I think is funny is is that whole focal point. Uh, it's the it's the picture of Scott with the goggles on. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think he just looks like spectacularly like a superhero in that. He kind of uh, does. Uh, in that picture. Yeah, you look like you're sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're so sweaty. I do. I look like I'm flushing the cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Little little game chips with our with our ugly mugs on it. So the game board actually has its own rule sheet. Wow. It's it, Jeffrey. It, wow. Um, this, th this just elevated. This man. is literally a prototype game that I hope that we can actually produce as a game for customers to oh purchase. Oh, my gracious. Uh, How fun is this? I know this? that in our Discord chat, if you're a Patreon, there was some conversation about it, some yes, sneak peeks. A certain person was very excited. Uh, yes. we, we do have somebody who's already like, take my money and we're like, I'm like, huh, <laughs> I really got to prototype. I think it's stage. funny. There's, you know, <clears throat> game board folks looks, you know, similar to, you know, your standard multi multi place, uh, you know, little spaces start and a finish. But as you go through it, there's a mud pit. It's winch. It I, says I, I feel called out by this one rolled off a cliff. Yep. Uh, there's a space that says rock garden tons and 40s. <laughs> uh, and then yet another mud pit and winch. So so to give you a brief description of how I designed it, when you roll, you're going to advance through the spaces, land on a, a space, you get a card. The card will give you some instructions whether you get to move forward, move back, um, or it could be an upgrade card. If you get an upgrade card, you get to keep that upgrade for the remainder of the game. If you land in front of the mud pit, you have to have the winch to go through it or roll a four while you're sitting here. If you roll a four sitting here, you engage four-wheel drive, and you can cross it. Oh, um, look at that. If you have the upgrade card, you can be anywhere before it and use it as a space mm. if you have the upgrade card. Uh, the Rock Garden, you have to have the tons and 40s upgrade. Um, <laughs> there is, if you land on the space above the cliff, you will roll down the cliff. Oh, and, and come and all the way come back. All the way back to basically a third of the danger. way. Danger. Yep. Should say danger. <laughs> <laughs> it should. You're right. I should add that. Um, so that's the fun part of it. And I feel like I feel like if you have uh, a roll cage upgrade, uh, then you <laughs> then you, you land just here. End up in here. Uh, like you end up in here. But if you have like the, you don't have a roll cage, you got to go all the way back to start because now your you're jeep dead. is mangled. <laughs> That's kind of fun. <laughs> and you're <laughs> so there's there's some additional uh, cards in here that that also make it very interesting. Oh boy! There is a card. I'm not going to tell you what it's called, but it will allow you to trade places with another player, and you can hold on to the card until you choose to use it. So if uh, mm. if you're ahead of another player and you don't want to use it right away, you can hold on you to it till later in the game. This guy is. Oh my gosh! That's the for that's the foundation. Of my wife and I's marriage is competition. Yeah. So this I, I tried to make this a very competitive and fun game. Here goes Neil. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a three already. I, I'm 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 gonna make somebody else use my face if they if yeah 100 percent one two three I'm gonna do that. Look how these look at these nice fitment. Now can I land on somebody else? No, because if you're how do I get a car? If you're if you're on a trail and there's a jeep ahead of you, you can't pass that jeep. So you can oh, in this game trail walkers trail in this, walkers in this oh, game you can goodness. actually you can go around on a bypass and so, get ahead of them, but so, you can't land on the same space. You would be stopped behind them. 
Oh, look at that. Yeah, that, we all know that that person who either broke something or thinks it's really funny that they broke something and now oh, they've yeah. they've they've So is he supposed to get he a card? He gets a card. I get a card. Mine says Jeep wave. And they wave back. Move ahead two spaces. One, two. I like it. <laughs> now do I discard my my card yep. or do I hold on yep. to it? Yeah, unless it's the upgrade card. All right. So All right. one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, just one ahead of one ahead of me. And I got an upgrade card. Winch equipped. Keep card from into a game. Treat mud pits like a regular space. Oh, so now he he's I'll got an access it. to a shortcut already. All right, Jeffrey, go roll. You you're you're in on this. All right, I'll use Neil's face. Oh, you uh, got a six. You're... I, I'm blocked all the way back here. Yeah. So you my... got stuck in third in line. Oh, I got a winch also. What? Yep. <laughs> it's so fitting. <laughs> <laughs> Four. You got to move your. I got to move my my person first. Yep. So my my one two three four. And then there's your card. And my card. Upgrade card. Lockers equipped. Keep okay. card for remainder game. Lockers add two spaces when you roll a four. I, I just rolled a four, didn't I? Yep. So you can move ahead two more spaces now. One, two. But so you now, can't go through the mud because you don't have a winch. Yeah, but his next turn, if he rolls a four, he's on that space, so he engages four wheel drive and he can go through it. Ooh, fancy! Your turn, Scott. Two. And you get a card though. Yep. Two. Uh, n naked cruise. Will in therapy roll dice again if two. The six move ahead three spaces. If you roll one, Scott said move back three. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled a one. He rolled a one. <laughs> How fitting. Scott hates naked jeeps. Yeah, Scott that's hates. <laughs> oh, that's great. That was that's serendipitous. <laughs> I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it again for folks. Naked Cruise. Wind Therapy, which, uh, you know, those of you who like the top off experience, roll the die again. If two through six, move ahead three spaces. Like if you roll a options. one, one, you had one chance. Scott <laughs> said, move back three spaces. In negatively impacted himself, right? Three. Three. Uh, one, two, three. And then my card. I got the bug deflector, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Installed bug deflector. Keep this card until used. Jeff awards you with the opportunity to trade places with another player at any time. You may only use this card once. Uh, <laughs> this game shows divine Because <laughs> oh, Neil doesn't have a winch. We just lock. I just uh, hope he gets. I hope he winches. gets. I hope he gets the Neil card. <laughs> uh, two. Um, I don't. I have to go. Yep. One, two. Upgrade card. Forties and tons equipped. Keep the <laughs> card. Fitting. Remainder of the game. <laughs> uh, re reduce move backward cards to only going back one space. That's mm. a good. That's a good. That's a good card there. Yep. That's you. Six. Oh, six. You move your, uh, yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. And Jeep wave, and they wave back. Move ahead two spaces. And you can use that to move right through the shortcut because you have the winch. Ah, look at so you then, jumped way yep. ahead. Yep, he jumped way Why, ahead. Why, is the mud pit one and that two, or is... The mud pit only counts as a space if you're using the four. Or the... Uh, no, yeah, you're right. That's a space, so okay. it'd be there. Okay. You're right. right. There we go. You wrote the the You wrote the, the instructions, instructions well, Then right? you confused me. One, two, three, <laughs> four... Five and I'm stuck there because you're of in that. the mud. I'm in the mud. How fitting! How fitting! <laughs> this is how it always stuck works. In the mud. This is like we're actually out That's on the trail again. And I got lockers equipped, so I can treat. Uh, it's supposed to say rock garden like regular. Do we? Uh, do we keep going or? I think we take a picture and we continue it next time. Oh, I like it. Okay. I like it. So I think that um, unless Jeffrey, you are the math. You made up the game. So are we at a? If you want to stop here, that's fine. I I, I think it's, I think it's, it's a valuable to uh, we're to in do the a middle of the board. We're in the middle of the board. We're into the game. Neil is lag lagging behind. Yeah. Jeff is behind Scott like normal, stuck, stuck in the mud, in the mud. <laughs> stuck in the mud. But uh, I have my lockers, tons and forty. So yeah. we're I'm I'm. But no winch as normal. <laughs> and Jeff and Scott have winches, and uh, somehow you got lockers. Yep. 
That's the only thing that isn't That's the only, true to real life. But he life. has his bug deflector, he folks. He has his bug deflector. Perfect. I think we 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 pause there. Are we going to go ahead and transition to? Uh, yes. yes. We have hashtag a not, sponsor. not sponsor. We have a hashtag not sponsor. And now it's time for our product spotlight. Hashtag not sponsor. Spotlight. Hashtag not sponsor. So I'm excited about this because a it's something friendly to vintage. Absolutely. B, it's a budget thing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's so, fascinating, so, personally. So I have, uh, for those that don't know what a cassette is, this is a tape cassette. <laughs> and back in the day, back in the day, you had a, a radio that you could put this into, and you hit play. Yes. And you heard music. How did you rewind it? Uh, With well, a pencil. You put a pencil. <laughs> on it it or if you had a fancy radio, it auto rewound. Oh, Ooh. those were that was money. That or, was out or, of the budget. Or it flips it itself. And yes, was... you did have some of them take it out, flip it over, and put yes. it back yep. in. Yep. Yep. This is the, the the new day version. This is actually a Bluetooth cassette adapter. Well, and because this is, I think I'm super psyched up about this product. <laughs> well, listen, right? Because there was when we were when we were growing up, you had the CD adapter one. Because then you there had, was, it was plugged into your CD player, right? Which skipped walkman, every time you absolutely. drove down the road. It just, yes. you just unless you had console. like the 30 second anti skip, then maybe you got oh, a couple. Yeah, of yeah. I had the Sony Explode Discman. So oh so, yeah. yeah, it was fancy. Eventually, that was eventually. college. That was money. That was that was yeah. out of the budget. But you had that adapter with the cord that you yes. had to shove in. Uh, and I, man, I was using that in my RAM up until like five years ago. Hundred yeah. percent. And you can still uh, plug it into a phone if it has a jack for that. But they're starting to take those away from us. Yes, yep. they are. So I saw this and and I was immediately excited uh, because this has a, a charge part for uh, USB. It mm -hmm. has a little battery in it. it. Has an on and off button. It has an LED light. Uh, if it has a blue flashing light, it's ready to be paired and used. If it's red, uh, you're shutting it off or the battery's low. Sure. And you just pair this with your phone, and then you can stream your music uh, uninterrupted. Put this in there. And other than the old school cassette noise of it rotating. Yes, winding and rotating. Sure. You can listen to whatever your heart's content. Yeah, that's... Including us on a streaming platform. Us on a streaming platform. <laughs> so I, I got to ask, uh, I assume you've already looked at this a little closer. Is it... Transferring it to like a tape reel and just no. feeding it through, or is no, it just some? It just has a head. There is no tape in it whatsoever. Okay. And uh, I'm not completely sure Magic. why there's even gears in there. Uh, for the just look. for our fun and the noise. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, there is gears in there. Obviously, oh, that kid to the to take this apart. Well, because your ca your cassette <laughs> your cassette player obviously would be spinning the gears still. Hundred percent. Even though there's nothing to do in the functionality of the, the this stereo is, itself. This is under twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's a so, neat product. That is and, really cool. And and you might be asking, I mean, in the world we're living in, why would that be applicable? I, I will share my own experience with um, my. I have a two thousand three Dodge Ram. Uh, I I really enjoy it. So. Uh, has a upgraded sound system and it has the on wheel controls yes. so I can, you know, turn up the volume and it just makes for a safer, more comfortable driving experience. Yep. And while I could upgrade the OE stereo to yes. something a little more modern back into that budget conversation, back into that budget conversation. And the functionality, those steering wheel controls in a older vehicle like that, that is not inherently CAN bus like our later model vehicles. So steering wheel controls in our later model vehicles um, are more disconnected from the actual radio itself. They're yeah. more of a Magic. software interface. Magic happens. Whereas the steering wheel buttons are basically wired into the stereo itself. Um and harder to pre-program or to program the functionality. So if I was to upgrade that 2003 Dodge Ram with my steering wheel controls, You'd lose I them. might lose the functionality yeah. unless I use a really high dollar, slightly obscure rewiring kit to do my steering wheel as well. Yep. So a product like this, for as often as I use the truck, might be a better option at under 25 bucks 100%. so that I could just link up my phone and, uh, you know, how often are we Bluetooth streaming our music listening off of our phones anyways? 100%. So it's not all that many more steps well, once only, you get into the vehicle. Not only that, in the vintage world, uh, it is now cool yes. to have a vintage stereo or an original AMF stereo. You actually, in a CJ, if you have an original 
AM FM slash CB hospital tape player. That is a three to five hundred dollar radio to find after the fact. Yeah, forty, fifty year, you know, forty year old uh, original to the vehicle, yes. and that is literally a status symbol. Yes, uh, that you have an original radio where everybody else took it out and threw it away, um, and now you can have that radio and still listen to your streaming music. Yeah. So or your favorite podcast or your favorite podcast like I Speak Jeep or the American Hustle. So That's right. I am super excited about it, and it is currently riding around in my pickup up truck. Fantastic. <laughs> Folks, we have covered the gamut today we from uh, our own personal experiences to big off-road shows that are happening soon to building on a budget and just budgetary concerns and conversations to really cool <laughs> kick-butt board games that Jeffrey has produced to, you know, Bluetooth integration with vintage technology. That, that was a roller coaster of a <laughs> right? show, but I think we had, I know we had fun. I hope you all did as well, the people listening in, the people who joined in our comments. Uh, remember that if you are listening to us in your ear holes on your commute, if you've got a Monday off or you schedule that phantom meeting, you too can <laughs> join us on Facebook live at 1019 a.m. and join in the conversation. Uh, we will be in part, uh, available at Bantam Jeep Heritage Festival. So if you are there, we look forward to seeing you talking with you saying hi, Jeffrey and I will certainly, uh, to my knowledge, be there every day. Yep. And, uh, we'll be doing some video, some audio recording. So we'd love to see you. So stop by, say hello. Otherwise we've got a lot of cool Jeeps to build here outside of the show circuit. Yep. But if you do need us, feel free to text uh, or call, or you can always email Jeff, J-E-F-F-C, at sfj4x4.com with any questions or comments. Uh, we love having you part of the process. Until then, Jeep on. Jeep on. Jeep on. Jeep on.